At Eleanor Palmer Primary School in London, a stage three maths lesson is about to start. The teacher uses an activity from Enrich, the domino pick game, to teach learners the difference between adding and multiplication, sum and product. The learning objectives are to use the domino games to help learners understand the differences between sum and product, adding and multiplication, and to use creative ways, number lines and chanting times tables, to introduce learners to the skills needed to complete the domino games. So we start every lesson in the juniors by chanting a times table. Four threes are twelve. A girl broke. Five threes are fifteen. Six threes are eight. And even up in year six, we'll have a visual, the counting stick. What's the missing number there? Nine. Good girl. Okay. Twelve. Thirteen. 50. Always start with that. It's a real routine. Always start the lesson. Two minutes. We will now see one example of how to introduce the domino activity in the lesson. It gives the teacher an opportunity to assess how much background information the class needs before starting the activity. What do you know about dominoes? Tell me anything you know about dominoes. They're rectangular, aren't they? Anyone know any history? They were introduced into Italy and they became a kind of game. And actually, the first time they appeared in England, they were often used in the countryside in the olden days to sort out squabbles. About the teacher the encourages field. learners to engage with the activity by getting them to take the part in the demonstration in the form of a game. We're going to, play. to play the game, the teacher introduces the word product. So I'm going to turn she explains the, the winning team will be the team that turns a domino with the highest product. Here is a new word. I'm going to show it to you all. Can you all say that as it goes round? Product. You have to do this operation. You do six times two. So the product of six and two is six times two is Lily. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Do you get the idea? Here we go. Doing it for the children. Come on, Julius. He's going. The class reaction shows the teacher that learners have understood the objective of the activity, looking for the highest product to beat the teacher's score. Five times five. Five fives are 25. Denzel, loving it. We might as well give up Miss Cumming, mightn't we? Absolutely. Should we have one more go? I'll do yeah. one more go. <laughs> I've just invented a new rule. If you turn over a square number, you get 100 bonus points. No, no. Do you think you understand the game? Yeah. Right. I wanted to model the dominoes game, which is really helps the middle low ability children to actually have played it once. So that's why we sat in a circle and that's why I used the bigger dominoes. So when they went off, they all knew how to play. That was, and that can often be a stumbling block if you're trying to be ambitious is the rules. So that was fine. If children are going to work independently, it's very hard for them to play a game unless they've seen how it works. And it's a really good way to use teaching points um, if there's a mistake or something goes wrong, you can pick up on it. We talk about good mistakes a lot at school um, and you can notice those things. Whereas if they've gone off independently, um, it wouldn't be so easy to do. So it just gets them started and sees the kind of traps. The same activity can be adapted according to the different needs of the class. In this class, the children are split into three groups. Group one is adding rather than multiplying. The teacher introduces the concept of subitizing. What we need to do now, okay? Now you need to add on whatever your score is. So you know what to do. Go on then. Is it plus five? You tell me. Five and five is ten. But you start with the highest number. Five, six, eleven. Good boy. Right now you need to add on eleven. So let's see what your score will be. What's your score? It's 
20 things. The group that I was working with, the main learning objectives was subitizing, which is knowing confidently what a number is from visually just looking at it. And that's what we were trying to do with the dominoes, adding in our head. Um, we were also looking at cumulative addition, adding on as well was another objective for us. Group two works in pairs. They practice the activity as demonstrated earlier. Oh, can you show me the domino from yours that gave you a product of 25? Good girl. Which domino gave you a product of 36? Brilliant. Which domino gave you a product of 9? You can use this to help if you want. Which one gives you a product of nine? Good girl, three threes and nine, well done. Group three carries out extension work by focusing on multiples of three and practicing higher cumulative totals of scores. The teacher demonstrates the game first. Listen, this is me against Rory, okay? Um, I'm going to pick up a domino where the spots add up to a multiple of three. Okay? I'm going to get the spots where the... And you're going to get the spots where they don't add up to a multiple of three. Okay? You're exactly right. That was my mistake. Right, so... Okay, so I can pick up any domino where the spots add up to a multiple of three. So, three and three is six. I get that domino. What do you want to pick, Rory? They mustn't add up to a multiple of three. What's two add two? Okay, my turn. Six and six is 12. That adds up to a multiple of three. Okay. Nothing add three is three. Four and two? No. Four and zero. Four and zero. Yep. You can chip, chip in and help him. I'm hearing four and zero, Rory. Six and five. Six and four. Six and five. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's just stop. Is this going to be a fair game? No. Nah. You're going to win. Nah. I'm going to win. Yeah. You think I'm probably going to win? Have a little look at what's left. I can get ones that add up to three. I can get ones that add up to six. I can get ones that add nine. Oh, right, I'll go and get one that adds up to nine. Your turn. So Ruffy thinks I'm going to win because I fix games. No. Right. He's going to win. I'm not giving up yet. One and three, two and three. Okay. Okay. okay, let's stop there. Group three then continues with the activity in pairs. Five and five, twenty-five. Okay. Um, Seventy-five. Six and six. You have to add up your score. You need. Nine, fifteen, um, twenty-eight. At the end of the lesson, the teacher introduces the plenary. This is to revisit the main learning objectives of the lesson, that sum is the same as addition and that product is the same as multiplication. To assess that learners understand the activity objectives and to share learning experiences within the class. There was a lot of teaching around the difference between the sum and the product. I think for some of them they'd had a really practical experience of multiplying by zero. Some of them who self-selected really aren't secure yet were using the times tables grids, which is great and that's fine. And learning how to do that is actually quite complicated, the 2D-ness of it. That was a really good context for them to do that. And then for the least able, they were subitizing quite well. That's such a building block. If you're not doing that, you're counting, you're not adding. You've got to know the answer. Two key words, and almost everybody in this room made the good mistake. Those two words that you need to focus on, because it's a really common mistake, are sum and product. Okay? So if I hold up that The teacher I'm assesses how much the class understands the about the lesson. The right, what's the sum, Raffi, of the spots on that domino? Eight. 
Okay, what is the product of the spots on that domino, Ava? Good. Various methods are used to engage with the class and find out more about their understanding. I am hiding a domino in my waistcoat. The sum of the spots, so you've got to work out what domino I've got. I've chosen quite a mean one. You've got to work out what's on my domino. Okay, the sum of my spots is five. So the spots add up to five. Ah, ah. What, might it, what might it be? It might be three and two. Evan? Might be three and two. What else might it be, Rosalie? I think it's two and five and zero. Might be five and zero. You're not sure. Let me give you some more clue. The product of the spots on my domino is zero. What is on my domino? <laughs> Rosalie! <laughs> well done, Rosalie. Right, let's try another one. Does anybody else think they could be the teacher and play this game? Let's go, Lily. Nobody look. You have got to look at the domino. Right? Okay? Write down what the sum is. So the sum and then write the product. Watch the sum. Is three. So the dots add up to three. Two and, uh, uh, two and one. Three and zero. Okay, what's the product? Three and zero. Three and zero. Show. Ta da! Well done. Brilliant. One. By using the interactive yes. domino activity, the teacher yes. reinforces the learning objectives. You think my rule is that the spots add up to eight. So is there a domino that would prove Macy right? Which domino should be in my set if the spots add up to eight? Come on, Sean, come and, get, come and see if you can drag another domino. If the rule is the spots add up to eight, can you do it? You aim me for that one? You put your finger on it and drag it across. And you are right. The teacher also shares learning experiences. Classic mistake is children would do six times six, tell you the answer's 12, or three times three, the answer's six. So when you know that's a common error, you teach away from it. So there was a lot of teaching around the difference between the sum and the product. I thought the new teaching was what happens when you multiply by zero and what happens when you multiply by one. And that created quite a fun context for them to actually uh, reinforce that. Ms. Reed, does this add up to a multiple of three or not? Oh my goodness, you and Rory, Bella. Do is zero a multiple of three? Yes, yes, yes. Are yes. we going to allow that? Yes. I think that might swing the game. Okay, zero is a multiple of three because zero threes are zero. I agree. Good. Good, good, good. Reflecting on the teaching strategies used in the classroom is an important part of lesson evaluation at this school. One of the principles in this school is you don't, you don't know what Friday's lesson looks like until you've taught Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we don't have a weekly plan as such. We'll have a sketchy overview of where we want the week to go, but until you've marked the books and watched the children and asked the questions, you don't know where the gaps are. Like I could identify after that lesson who is still very stuck on six times six is 12. Who needs more work, perhaps a game like we played at the end, really you know, clarifying the difference between sum and product. I could see also which children actually are pretty tight on the three times table and confidently chanted all the way up to 20 times and could sort of were beginning to explain why they knew that was right. So it's only through questioning and through real activities that you um, get a real sense of where the children are at. It's fun and to add and you can do all sorts of things with numbers. The main benefit really is enjoyment of maths and that's what pushes children's progress on the most. If they love it and they want to do it and they're interested in maths, they're thinking about maths, they're talking about maths, they're going to improve their mathematics. To find out more about Cambridge Primary Maths, contact us.